Hello and welcome to In the Kitchen with Matt. I am your host, Matt Taylor. In honor of National Peanut Butter Day, which is today, January 24th, I wanted to show you how to make my top eight favorite peanut butter recipes. They are all super easy to make, super delicious. If you like peanut butter, you are gonna love these. If I can do it, you can do it. Before we move on, make sure to subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any of my new videos. Let's get started. First up, we have homemade peanut butter. I have a food processor here and I'm going to add in two cups of dry roasted peanuts. If you don't have dry roasted peanuts and you just have normal peanuts, you can spread them out evenly on a sheet pan and then bake them in the oven at 325 Fahrenheit or around 160 Celsius for about 18 to 20 minutes. And then they'll be ready to go. And now we're gonna make the peanut butter. We don't add any of the additional ingredients yet. We wanna start getting this to be smooth. So I'm just gonna put the top on and let's turn this on and let it go for about four to five minutes. And I wanna show you the different stages. So the first stage is gonna be very, it's gonna smell very peanutty and it's gonna be, you know, turn into like sand at first. So that's kind of the first stage, broken down into sand and that only took like 30 seconds to get to this point coarse sand, and then I just use a spatula to kind of push down anything that's hanging out on the sides, and then sometimes in the, the top you might have some peanuts that get on there. And then now let's just turn it on some more. And then after a couple more minutes, it's gonna to start to come together. And now it's gonna to start to resemble that peanut butter. It's like a hard clumpy, or it's like a more of clumpy peanut butter right now. Some people will add at this point just a little bit of peanut oil to help it along. It's not totally necessary, but you can do that as well. And then what happened is it clumped up together and then after a couple seconds, it turned into a peanut butter. Isn't that awesome? It's really, really cool. And at this point, I'm gonna, I do wanna add in just a little bit of salt. You don't have to add in the salt. I'm just gonna add in a little bit of salt and a little bit of honey for sweetness. Um, or you could do like sugar as well. or you don't have to add it in at all and just do a completely natural style peanut butter. All right, and there we have it. That is our peanut butter. It will get a little more smooth if you add in some extra peanut oil with it. I want to give it a taste here. I personally want to add just a little bit more salt and just a little bit more honey, which will make it about two teaspoons total of honey. go we've got this awesome peanut butter homemade peanut butter and now I'm just gonna scoop it in this mason jar oh yeah and then you can use this peanut butter in anything you want homemade peanut butter cups oh yeah peanut butter and jelly sandwiches whatever you want to do and then you'd cover this and store it in the refrigerator for more long-term storage. The oils might separate a little bit and then you'll have to stir it. But if you're gonna eat it pretty fast, then 
you can just store it at room temperature as well. Time for me to dive into this. Oh yeah. I'm just gonna eat it like this. Oh yeah. Mm-mm-mm. Mm. -mm. mm, -mm, -mm. mm, -mm, -mm. Next, we have peanut butter cookies. These are one of the most popular cookies here in the United States. First, we're gonna preheat our oven to 375 degrees. We have one cup of peanut butter. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our butter. We have one half cup softened butter. One half cup of light brown sugar. One half cup of granulated sugar. And then with a hand mixer or stand mixer, let's go ahead and cream this all together. Okay, and then let's just, once we're done, let's go ahead and scrape the sides. Okay, now we have three tablespoons of milk. Let's add that. Start on the mix, cream it together. Scrape the sides. One egg. Cream that in together. One teaspoon of vanilla extract. And then let's scrape the sides one more time. Now we take one and one fourth cups of all purpose flour, add one teaspoon of baking powder, one fourth teaspoon of salt, and then with a fork or a whisk, or you could sift it together, let's just mix this together. All right. Come back to our peanut butter. Now we're gonna add this about a third at a time. Add the flour to the peanut butter mixture. Turn on the mixer. Scrape the sides. Add another third of the flour. Okay, and then let's add the rest of our flour. We'll scrape the sides one more time. Okay, once we are done mixing, let's go ahead and clean the beaters. As a kid, my favorite part of cookie making was actually licking off the beaters. Somehow my mom always would clean off a ton to where I, like that, to where I barely have anything to lick off. And now our dough is ready to go. All right, now it's time to roll out our cookies. So what you do is I just take a tablespoon. You can do whatever method you want. This helps to get the same amount of cookie. And just get some dough here. And then I'm gonna roll it in a ball. Like that. And then you place it on your cookie sheet. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take a fork and you're gonna push it down. Like that. And you can leave it like that shape or you can come in to this other side. And go like that. All right. Just now, optionally, what you can do also, what I like to do, if you want extra sweet cookies, Go ahead and take your dough and roll it into sugar all around like that. Pretty cool. Go ahead and do the same thing. And if the edges start to split a little bit, that's totally fine. You can just come in here and push them back together if you want a nice, you know, perfectly formed cookie. Pretty cool, and now I'm gonna finish rolling those out. Now I'm using a silicone baking mat. This is an artisan mat brand. Um, it's not necessary, you can use a parchment paper if you like. I really like these artisan mats. Uh, it really helps the cookie to not burn on the bottom and you can rewash it, they last a long time. This batch is ready to go. So what we do is we bake these in the oven, 375 degrees for eight to 10 minutes or until the edges get slightly brown. On to that step. All right, after they come out of the oven, just let them set on the cookie sheet for about five minutes and then transfer them over to a wire rack to cool completely. These turned out beautifully. Mm -mm -mm. 
Mmm. Mmm. Amazing. Super soft and chewy. Mmm. Number three, no bake peanut butter cookies. To start, let's add in our one and three fourths cups of white granulated sugar. Now let's add in our butter, one half cup of unsalted butter, and then our one half cup of milk. And I'm using 2%, you can use whole milk or 1%. Now let's take this over to the stove top. I have my burner set to medium heat and we want to heat up the mixture. The um, sugar is gonna melt. The butter's gonna melt. And then we're gonna bring it to a rolling boil. And once it gets to a rolling boil, we wanna let it cook for one minute before we take it off the heat. And then we're gonna stir fairly frequently. We don't want anything to burn. Okay, so once it gets to the rolling boil stage where the whole thing is bubbling, let's go ahead and let it bubble or cook for one minute. We'll keep stirring. And after our minute's up, let's take it off the heat. And now we're gonna pour our mixture into a large bowl. And then we're gonna add our peanut butter, three fourths cups of peanut butter, and then stir it together. As the peanut butter melts. And then we'll also add in our one teaspoon of vanilla extract. Once our peanut butter is nice and melted in there, let's take our three and one fourth cups of oats. You can use quick oats or normal oats. Quick oats work really well because they're smaller, but you can use whatever oats that you have. Old fashioned oats work okay too. And let's just keep mixing this in until they get nice and coated. It almost looks like peanut butter oatmeal. <laughs> peanut butter oatmeal, yeah. Peanut butter oatmeal. Now once we have that all mixed in, we need to transfer it over to a silicone mat or parchment paper lined baking sheet. And then I just take two large tablespoons and I'll come in here and scoop some mixture out and plop it right down there. And then just kind of push it down a little bit. You can shape it to whatever size that you want. And now just place these trays in the fridge and let the cookies set up. It's been about 20 minutes and the cookies have set nicely. I want to show you what one looks like on the inside. Oh yeah, that's the bottom. There you go, yummy. Next we have peanut butter balls or truffles. First, let's measure out our peanut butter. We need three quarters cup of peanut butter. And I got this cool little gadget here from Pampered Chef. Got it for my birthday. I love this thing. Um, dry ingredients on this side, wet ingredients in here. Um, really cool, especially for things like peanut butter. You just set it to three quarter cup. Get our peanut butter. And then once it's full, what you do, you just come in here and you push. Boom. Take a knife or spatula and scrape off the rest. No digging into your measuring cup. Pretty cool. All right, and I'm gonna add one tablespoon of butter. I'm gonna just mix this around a little bit. All right, and now we wanna use powdered sugar. I have two cups of powdered sugar, but I'm not gonna use, I'm not gonna dump it all in. I'm gonna do a little bit at a time until I get the consist consistency I want. We want the consistency to be like a, a little kid's uh, Play-Doh. Okay. 
Okay, and then when it starts to get really nice and thick like this, what I do like to do is come in with my hands and just kind of knead it a little bit. All right, so it resembles like a Play-Doh, not sticky at all, ready to go. Now, I have chocolate candy melts here. I'm gonna melt this in the microwave on bursts of 30 seconds. So 30 seconds, stir, 30 seconds, stir, and then 20 seconds, and then that should melt the chocolate. You can also use a double boiler if you like. Once our chocolate is melted, I'm gonna go ahead and take some peanut butter in my hand here, and we wanna roll it into a ball. I'm gonna make this about an inch in diameter, and then I have this little tool here. It came with a little chocolate kit, and it's really cool. You can just put your peanut butter ball right on there, and you just dip it in, and then it makes a nice little ball like that. I go ahead and put it on parchment paper, or I have a silicone mat in my on my uh, baking sheet. Another thing that's fun to do is to come in here and decorate it. So like on this one, I'm gonna take some nuts. This one, I'm gonna put some little chocolate chips on. This one, I'm gonna put some coconut on. And then when you're done, go ahead and put them in the refrigerator and let them set for about 30 minutes. And then once they've cooled a little bit, what I like to do is come in also with some white chocolate, and decorate some of these with white chocolate. And then you'd put this back in the fridge to let the white chocolate set. And there you have it, peanut butter balls. Time for me to dive into one of these. Oh yeah, I'm gonna dive into this guy right here. Mm -mm -mm. Mm. Number five, peanut butter fudge. Oh yeah, I love peanut butter fudge. All right, so first what we're gonna do is we're gonna just take a nice sauce pot right here, and then we're gonna go ahead and add in our two cups of white granulated sugar. And then we're gonna add in our one half cup of milk. Now let's go ahead and take this over to the stove top, and we're gonna heat it up. All right, here we are over at the stove top. I have the I have the heat on medium low. We're gonna heat this up until it starts to boil. And then once we get it to boil, what we wanna do is let it boil for two and a half minutes before we take it off the heat, okay? And we're gonna stir to make sure it doesn't burn. And when it's at this early stage, you can just go ahead and stir occasionally. Once it starts to get really hot, we're gonna need to keep Keep stirring. Um, and this part right here takes a little while. Okay, once it starts boiling, you can see it's starting to bubble and boil here. Then we wanna start, we'll start the timer for two and a half minutes. Let's just go ahead and keep stirring at this point so it doesn't burn. It's taken about 20, 25 minutes actually to get to this point. All right, once the timer goes off, let's go ahead and remove it from the heat. All right, now we wanna work fairly quickly. Let's go ahead and add in our vanilla extract. We'll stir that in there. Okay. And then let's add in, that was one teaspoon of vanilla extract. And then let's go ahead and add in our three-fourths cup of peanut butter. Get it all in there. Okay, nice. And let's just keep, go ahead and just start stirring this in there. Great, this is looking awesome. It's getting nice and smooth. Oh yeah, that's where you want it to be. It smells really good. All right, at this point, let's go ahead and take our eight by eight pan that we have lined with parchment paper. Get all this in there. I'm gonna come over to my spatula. 
All right, awesome. Okay, and then once you get it all in there, just go ahead and spread it out. Okay, and then you can give it a little tap, give it a little wiggle, so it gets a little even. And now we just wanna let it set and cool completely and it'll set up and it'll be ready to cut into. And there we go. Okay, once our peanut butter fudge has set, cool down, go ahead and take it out of the pan. And let's go ahead and just cut into this, just like normal fudge. Yeah, pretty awesome. And just go ahead and cut it up in those squares, whatever size that you want. And there you go. Time for me to dive into one of these. Oh yeah, I'm grab this one right on top. Mm -mm -mm. Mm. Next, peanut butter cup fudge. Very similar to peanut butter fudge with a layer of chocolate, super yummy. So we start with a medium size pot here and I want to add my two cups of white granulated sugar and then I have one half cup of half and half or you could use whole milk. And there we go, now let's take this over to the stove top. Here we are over at the stove top and I have the heat set to a medium low and we want to bring this mixture up to a boil. If you have watched my peanut butter fudge video, this is pretty much the same exact thing that we're doing. So we are just going to stir occasionally. Right now while it's heating up, you don't have to worry too much, um, but as it starts getting hotter, you wanna stir more frequently so it doesn't burn. And this will take a little while, probably 15 to 20 minutes before you bring it up to a boil. You don't want to have the heat up too high. And then eventually it's going to start to bubble and uh, boil like this. And you keep stirring and set the timer for two minutes. All right, once the timer's up, let's go ahead and remove it from the heat. Turn off that oven. And now we want to add in one teaspoon of vanilla extract. Stir that in really well. Smells really good. And then we add in the, one of the stars of this dish, the peanut butter. And this is three fourths cup. And you can go up to a, a full cup of peanut butter if you want. And then we wanna just stir this all together. And it's gonna melt down that peanut butter. And it's gonna get a nice blonde color and it's gonna get nice and thick. All right. And now I have a seven by 11 pan here that I, um, I put some kitchen spray down and then I put uh, parchment paper on that. And you can use a eight by eight as well. And we want to get our peanut butter in there. And you kind of want to work um, fairly quickly during this part. And we'll spread it out with the spatula. If you want it to be a little thicker, then you can use the eight by eight pan. I really like the thickness that this seven by 11 pan gives me. Okay. Give it a tap. And now the fun part, we take one cup of dark chocolate chips, or you can use um, whatever kind of chocolate chips that you want. And you can use less or more of this you're just gonna put these all on there. You can come in here with this and just kind of push it down. And then the heat from the hot peanut butter mixture is going to melt the chocolate enough to where you can spread it. You can just melt the chocolate 
um, like in the microwave or on the stovetop, and then just pour it on top if you like as well. But this works pretty cool. So just let that sit for about five minutes and then we'll come back and just spread it out. All right, and then after about five minutes of just sitting there, um, you can come in and the um, chocolate chip should be nice and soft. So you can just spread out the chocolate like this. And you can use milk chocolate. You could use semi-sweet. If you want it to be less sweet overall, then cut down the sugar that you put in the peanut butter. And also it'll depend on what kind of peanut butter you're using. If you're using all natural peanut butter, that won't have any additional sugar. Lots of different varieties that you can do with this awesome, amazing, super simple treat. And if you don't want the classic square shape of fudge, you could put these in paper cups. Put the fudge in the paper cups and then put the chocolate on top. You just have to work more quickly when you're putting this into individual little paper cups because the peanut butter will firm up fairly quickly. All right, there we go. Now we just let this sit and let it cool completely and then put it in the fridge and then it's gonna just set really nice for us. And then we can take it out and cut it up and eat it. Yeah! All right, and when it comes out of the fridge, it'll be nice and firm on the top. And we'll just pick this up out of the container. Fold that down and we can cut into this. Oh yeah! And then, Cut straight down. And then just cut them whatever size that you want. Um, normally I just make, I make them this big. One, so two servings. One for me and another for me. <laughs> I'm totally kidding. <laughs> um, I usually make them, oh, about an inch. inch in size. Seems to be a good treat size. Then you can eat like a ton of them and not feel guilty if you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. Alright, so just go ahead and cut through them and you'll come on this side and finish the square shape. All right, there we go, they're all cut up. And we can pick a square up and show you how it looks. Pretty awesome. Chocolate on top, peanut butter on the bottom. Amazing. And then give it a quick taste. Oh yeah, mmm, oh. Number seven, peanut butter blossoms. These cookies are really popular around the holidays. Super delicious. First, we will start with one half cup of softened, unsalted butter. You could use salted butter if you want. Just reduce the amount of extra salt that we add. And then I wanna add the one of the stars of this dish, three fourths cups of peanut butter. Put that in there. And then we want to beat these together. So I'm just gonna use a hand mixer here, or you could just use your wooden spoon or a whisk. All right, fantastic. I'm gonna add in one large egg, one teaspoon of vanilla extract, and we'll mix those together. Perfect. And then we'll come in here with one half cup of light brown sugar, one third cup of white granulated sugar. If you don't have brown sugar, then you can use all granulated sugar. All right, we'll come in here and throughout this whole process, you'll be scraping the sides of the bowl when needed, just to make sure everything gets 
blend it in properly. Awesome. So we have all of that uh, blended in. And now we want to put in our dry ingredients and I have a sifter here. You don't need to use a sifter. You could just put your dry ingredients in a bowl and whisk them together. Just put in my all-purpose flour. That's one and a half cups. One, tea, one half teaspoon of salt. And one teaspoon of baking soda. And then I normally just do half of it first. And I come in here and mix it. And scrape those sides. All right, I'm gonna put the rest of this in here. Add a little bit in this bowl. And then we'll mix it up. Scrape the sides. Just kind of bring it all together. And we'll give it one last mix. All right, that's good enough. Just until it's all combined, we can remove these beaters. And resist the urge to eat the cookie dough because of the raw egg, or don't resist and eat some of it. Up to you, I'm not gonna say nothing. I may or may not still eat raw cookie dough. And I'm not gonna lie, when I was a little kid, that was one of my favorite things to do, was eat raw cookie dough. And then I just wanna bring it all together. And then I'm gonna cover this and chill it in the refrigerator for about an hour. Also, I'm gonna take my Hershey Kisses. I have about 24 of them here. And then I'm going to put these in the refrigerator as well and chill them along with the dough. After the dough has chilled, preheat the oven to 375 degrees Fahrenheit or 190 Celsius. And then I have a tablespoon here. And I'm gonna come in and get some dough. And we want to roll it with clean hands into a ball. And then come in here to sugar and dip it in the sugar. And place it on a cookie sheet lined with parchment paper or a silicone mat. Let's do that. And space them about two inches apart. And then we bake these in the oven. Again, 375 Fahrenheit, 190 Celsius for eight to 10 minutes and they're gonna get slightly cracked on the top and they'll be slightly golden brown on the edges. On to that step. And when they come out of the oven, they'll look something like this. They'll still be mounded, slightly golden brown on the top and on the edges a little bit, and they'll be cracked a little bit. And then we take the cold with our hands and just push it down. And then it will crack even more the cookie. And this gives us the classic look that we are going for. And then I'm gonna just let them sit here on the pan for about five minutes and then transfer them to a wire rack to cool completely. And this recipe makes about 24 of these peanut butter blossom cookies. And after they've cooled, you can bite into them. I'm gonna take this one right here. Oh yeah. Mmm. So 
awesome. And number eight, my all time favorite peanut butter recipe, peanut butter cups. These are so delicious. I call these my better than Reese's peanut butter cups. All right, first we're gonna start with our peanut butter or you can use almond butter, cashew butter, pretty much any nut butter you can make these with. And I'm using the creamy kind, you can use um, the chunky kind as well. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take about a half teaspoon of butter, softened. This is not necessary. If you don't have any to use, don't use it. You can leave it out. I just like to add it. And then I'm gonna go ahead with my spoon here. Just go ahead and mix the butter in with my peanut butter. It's pretty, it's pretty easy. And now we're just gonna start adding our confectioner sugar or powdered sugar. What we wanna do is we wanna get the consistency of this to be like Play-Doh, okay? So just go ahead and pour some in and just go ahead and stir it around, stir it around. It might get a little messy. It's okay if you get powdered sugar everywhere. I'm not gonna tell anybody that you did it. Add some more. And you could use a fork for this. I just always use a spoon. And you could also just dig in there with your hands too if you want. Um, so what I do is I like push down into the peanut butter and that opens it up so it can receive more of that sugar. All right, so this is kind of more what we want it to be. So make sure you have clean hands. You're gonna wanna take some of it and be able to form it, shape it. See how I can shape it in my hands really nice? and you wanna make it a, a piece about like that. Okay, about that big. Set this aside. And now what we wanna do is we want to melt our chocolate. I have two different types of chocolate here. I have semi-sweet chocolate chips with a special dark Hershey's bar for one kind. And then I also have these milk chocolate candy melts. Also, where you might wanna use candy melts more often is if you're gonna take them to a party and they're gonna be sitting out at room temperature, then you wanna use candy melts um, because it doesn't have any cocoa butter in it and it won't melt as easy um, or get soft as easy at room temperature. Other, otherwise, with normal chocolate, you have to temper it and it's kind of a pain. I'm just gonna melt these in the microwave on burst of 30 seconds, stir, 30 seconds, stir, 15 seconds until nice and melted. So I'm gonna start with the candy melts and then I'll show you what we do from there. All right, now that we have our candy melts melted, what we do is you just come in here and get about a teaspoon, half a teaspoon worth. And you're just gonna put some in the bottom, just like that. Just like that. And then I'm just gonna shake it a little bit so it flattens out, not necessary really. And then you take your little piece of peanut butter and just go ahead and drop it right down on there and give it a little push and get some more. And you can put more peanut butter mixture or less if you want, depending on how big you wanna make these. So just go ahead and do that with the rest of these. All right, and then once you have all of them filled up like that, just come back in with your chocolate, do a little dollop, dollop. Okay, and then come in here with your spoon and just make sure the whole tops are all covered. You don't have any peanut butter showing. You could have the peanut butter showing if you want. I have some friends of mine that are from the Midwest, Ohio area, say that they thought that these kind of reminded them of Buckeyes, a little treat, kind of close to those, I guess. Okay, those are ready to go. All right, now I just gotta do the semi-sweet and dark chocolate. One thing I love about this is I always have peanut butter, powdered sugar, and chocolate on hand because this treat is so yummy and it's super quick to make. Like, it takes start to finish to where you can eat them. It's like 45 minutes tops. All right, get the peanut butter. And then if you find after you're digging in there that it starts to get too sticky, just add a little bit more 
powdered sugar to it. All right, and then come in here and top these guys off. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, you need to try out this recipe. And then what I do with the leftover chocolate, if I have some leftover chocolate, even if I have leftover peanut butter, is I'll just make some more of these and put them on a plate instead of in the uh, this little pan. Um, I only have one of these pans. Um, also sometimes what I'll do is I'll just find some fruit and dip some fruit in the chocolate. <laughs> but yeah, so there we go. And now you just put this in the fridge for 25 to 30 minutes until the chocolate sets and then you're ready to go. Super easy. All right, I just took my homemade peanut butter cups out of the fridge. I'm gonna grab one here, peel back the Look at that, really cool. Take a bite out of it. Mmm. So yummy. And there you go, I hope you enjoyed these eight peanut butter recipes. Let me know in the comments what your favorite peanut butter recipes are and let me know if you try any of these recipes. Once again, my name is Matt Taylor. This has been another episode of In the Kitchen with Matt. Thank you for joining me. As always, if you have any questions, comments, or requests, put them down below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thumbs up, down the corner, push it. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and check out my other videos. Take care.